All right. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Spirit of Fire Fellowship. I'm Pastor Mike May here in the great city of Richmond, Virginia, and we want to welcome everybody to our online worship experience. This is our virtual Sunday that we're uh, virtually and we've been doing our hybrid uh, model for a while now that we every first and third Sunday we're in person, every second and fourth that we're virtual. And so we just want to thank you for showing up today. We don't believe it's by chance that you're here, but we do believe that there's going to be something that's going to be shared and said that's going to be a blessing to your life. So just on behalf of my wife, Pastor Raquel, and myself, we just want to say welcome to everybody. We want you to just come on in, relax, go ahead, grab your coffee, grab your food, and we want you to get your pens and pads ready for the Word of God that's about to go forth. For all of our first-time visitors, we want to acknowledge you. We want to just thank you for showing up today. And so if this is your first time, we just want to say welcome to Spirit of Fire Fellowship. We love you. We appreciate you. We thank God for you. Listen, tune in. Stay tuned in because this is going to bless you today. We are continually continuing on our series, The Remedy, dealing with um, healing and health. And that is God's will for you to be healthy, for you to be strong, for you to be healed. And so if you know anybody who's been dealing with sickness or disease, chronic pain, illnesses, whether it's mental illness, whether it's physical, whatever it is, we want you to tune in today because we're going to continue sowing the word of God into your life and sharing things with you that's going to bless you. I'm expecting healings to take place. I'm expecting things to manifest. Manifest. I'm expecting signs and wonders to take place in the name of Jesus. There is no distance in the spirit. So the same grace, same anointing that we're experiencing here locally, you can experience it globally. No matter where you are, the power of God is present to heal, to set free, to deliver, to make whole. Whatever is wrong, I'm praying that God makes it right. Whatever is rough is going to be made smooth. Whatever is crooked is going to be made straight in the name of Jesus. Amen. And I want you to be stirred up. Let's get our faith stirred up today. Come with expectation. Expect to see God's manifested power. Expect to see things change. Expect for yourself to be healed in Jesus' name. I'm telling you, listen, expect it. Expectation is the breeding ground for miracles, signs and wonders. And we're expecting to see signs and wonders take place. So no matter what you're dealing with, I don't care what has happened, what has hit your body, God's power is present to heal and to set free. And so I want you to today, I want you to go ahead, get your Bibles, get your pads, get ready to take notes, get ready to receive the word of God. So at this time, what I want to do is I want to go ahead and jump into this. Let's go ahead and pray. And let's believe God together. Let's believe God to see the goodness of God in the land of the living. Let's believe to see the transformative power of God's grace at work. Let's begin to expect to see things happen. I don't care if people are on your deathbed and you happen to tune in. I'm believing God that you're going to come up off that deathbed and walk and rise up in Jesus name. I'm expecting cancers to clear up. I'm expecting sinuses to open up. I'm expecting blinded eyes to open in the sea. I'm expecting deaf ears to open in the hear. I'm expecting the dumb to talk. I'm expecting if you've been in a wheelchair that you're going to rise up and walk no matter what it is. In Jesus name, we are in agreement with you. We are in faith with you for to see the power of God in manifestation. Amen. So let's pray. Father, we thank you for this another opportunity to minister to these, your precious sheep. I thank you that revelation knowledge of your word will flow freely today, uninterrupted and unhindered by any satanic or demonic force. None of me, all of you. Holy Spirit, speak to my vocal cords, think to my mind to bring wisdom, knowledge, and good understanding of the word. I pray that every ear is anointed to hear, every heart open, ready to receive the engrafted word of God, which is able to save our souls. We bless you and we thank you. Father, we thank you. You are a big God. You are a great God. And healing has already been provided through the shed blood of Jesus. So no matter what, we are already the healed, possessing and obtaining our health and maintaining our health through faith in your word. So, Father, we thank you for it now in Jesus name. We covered the gifts of the spirit to be in operation and demonstration. We expect signs, wonders and miracles to take place in the name of Jesus. We expect immune systems to be boosted right now in Jesus name that wards off sickness and disease. We're expecting it, Father. We're expecting bad diagnosis to be to be turned around now for the favor for people's favor and therefore for their good. 
Father, we thank you now, even as your word is going forth, even as people are sitting up under this word, that their bodies are being healed even now in the name of Jesus, that they'll turn around and by the end of this service, that they'll see that symptoms are gone. They'll see that things have already started changing in their bodies. They'll see lumps being removed and dissolving right now in the name of Jesus. Blockages and buildups are being removed right now in Jesus' name. And so, Father, we give you praise in advance for it. And we give you glory in advance. We covered the gifts, Father. We thank you right now for the gift of faith, gifts of healings and working of miracles. We thank you for the word of wisdom, word of knowledge, and even discerning of spirits. We come against the spirit of infirmity now in Jesus' name. If there's a spirit that's causing that sickness or disease, we command you and take authority over you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ to come off of their bodies now in Jesus name. And father, we bless you and we thank you for it. And we give you all the praise. We give you all the glory. Yeah. We give you all the honor for it now in Jesus mighty, holy and majestic name. And everybody in agreement say amen and amen. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Listen, we have been talking last week. We started dealing with this thing and I understand. Listen, the power of God showed up. And one of the things I realize is as a preacher, as a pastor, as a teacher of the word of God, I have to now govern and watch over the flock. That's what God commands us as pastors to do. Watch over the flock of God, feed the sheep and begin to see. Sometimes you got to take assessments and see what's going on, what's happening. What do we need to deal with? What do we need to attack right now? And even during this season, you begin to see a lot of sicknesses and diseases. We're hearing about viruses going around in our schools and people dealing with things with COVID and coming out of this pandemic and, and people are walking in fear and things and people are getting sick, turning you know left and right. And I'm just seeing so much that's happening. And it's like, you know what? I made a decision. I feel like just by even by the spirit of God or just saying, you know what? We need to deal with this. We need to deal with. Um, walking in divine health. We need to deal with healing that, you know what, not just being healed, but learning how to walk in divine health or health, having a healthy lifestyle so that we won't even deal with certain things that have been attacking our body. Sometimes it can be just stewardship over our body, stewardship over our lives to now position us to walk in long life and longevity. Longevity has its place. We want to live long and we want to live strong in Jesus name. We're not just talking about just living long, but you decrepit while you're doing it. We're talking about living long and living strong in Jesus name. And we want to enjoy life in abundance to the full till it overflows. Jesus said in John 10 and 10, he says, the thief come if not, but for the steal, kill and destroy. But I am come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. Now that word life comes from the Greek word Zoe. This is the God kind of life. Jesus says, I want you to live this life. The Amplified says in abundance to the full till it overflows. And so we're supposed to live life in abundance to the full till it overflows. In third John and two, he says, beloved, I wish or pray above all things, all things that you would prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. And so to the degree of your soul prospering, the mind, will, intellect, emotions, imagination. And right now, as your soul prospers, your life prospers. And so we want to make sure even where divine health is concerned in healing, see health and healing in your body is prosperity in your body, that your body is prospering because you're walking in health. And so if you are seeing chronic things hit your life, chronic diseases, chronic ailments, Things where it seems like your immune system has always been depleted in it, and there are these attacks that's been hitting your body on a regular basis. You got to know, wait a minute, it is God's will for me to walk in divine health. It is God's will for me to be strong. And I can now walk in this power where every disease, germ, virus, bad bacteria, infirmity, parasite that tries to infiltrate or touch my body dies instantly. And so now, 
I say stuff like bad bacteria. Watch this because they're good bacteria. They're things that your body is designed to deal with on the inside. And so that's why too, to prosper in your soul is to even understand how your body works so that you even know how to speak against certain things and how to declare certain things. Now, listen, I'm telling you, once you understand and start growing in this and you start growing in your authority, then whenever something comes against your body, you will immediately respond in faith. You will immediately reject what's trying to hit your body in Jesus name. You have been sick long enough. And in the name of Jesus, I declare you whole and I declare you healthy in Jesus name. Now I want you to begin to speak that over your body. I want you to right now, I'm, I'm coming out the gate with it. I want you to say, I want you to lay hands on your own body now and say in the name of Jesus, body, I call you healed. I call you well. Every disease, every germ, every virus, every bad bacteria, every infirmity, every parasite that tries to touch or infiltrate my body dies instantly in Jesus name. I want you to, to declare this. Say my immune system is strong and it wards off sickness and disease in Jesus name. It is the will of God for me to live long, for me to live strong and say to say, I will live long. The number of my days will be fulfilled. Say, I will not die before my time. I will live long and enjoy a long, prosperous, healthy, abundant life in Jesus' name. Amen. So we're going to start that out the gate. That's the medicine of God's word. We are applying the medicine of God's word to our lives. Now, I want to read something to you. Let's go um, to the book of, let's go to Psalm 91, the 91st Psalm. And I'm going to read this out of the New Living Translation. I'm going to read this out of New Living and it says here, we're going to start in verse one. And it says, those who live in the shelter of the most high will find rest in the shadow of the almighty. This I declare before about the Lord. He alone is my refuge, my place of safety. He is my God and I trust him. I trust him for he will rescue you from every trap and protect you from deadly disease. He's going to rescue you from every trap and protect you from every deadly disease. Now, let me hold on here. He's going to, watch this. He's going to rescue you. Any traps that have been set for you, God is going to rescue you. I don't care who's been plotting against you. God says, I'm going to deliver you from the traps of those that have been speaking against you. Those that have been plotting against you, it's going to be exposed and you're going to see it. And God's going to grant you wisdom. He's going to give you insight. He's going to help you come out of that situation like pure gold. And in the name of Jesus, I declare that every plan against you is spoiled in Jesus name. Praise God. Now watch this. He says he's going to protect you from deadly disease. You don't have to be afraid of deadly disease. You ain't got to be afraid of COVID. You ain't got to be afraid of cancer. You ain't got to be afraid of HIV. You ain't got to be afraid of AIDS. You, I don't care whatever immune deficiencies. I don't care what the sickness is. You don't have to be afraid of it because God is going to protect you from every deadly disease in Jesus name. Amen. He'll cover you with his feathers. And I know there's the question of, well, how come people get sick then? How come they do this? Listen, I'm going to get to that in a moment because we need to start being proactive versus reactive. We need to start now getting on the offensive where our health and our healing is concerned. Don't wait for something to attack your body to start speaking against it. Start building yourself up now in Jesus name and start declaring things over your body. 
That means things like my body is in perfect chemical balance and alignment. My T cell count is normal. And listen, any cancerous cells, I curse them now in the name of Jesus. Don't wait for no report. Listen, in Jesus' name, if there are any polyps in my system, I command them to be dissolved and removed now. It Start working your faith. Start building your faith now and put that faith in reserve. Listen, to come against this stuff. I'm, I'm, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me keep going because I'm, 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 I'm kind of getting ahead of myself. I'm getting stirred up with this. He says this. Let's keep continue. In verse four, he says he will cover you with his feathers. He will shelter you with his wings. His faithful promises are your armor and protection. He says, don't be afraid of the terrors of the night, nor the arrow that flies in the day. Do not dread the disease that stalks in darkness, nor the disaster that strikes at midday. Listen. Listen, even when he talks about wars and rumors of wars, he says, don't be afraid. I don't want you to be afraid of COVID. I don't want you to be afraid of any disease that they're talking about. I don't want you to be afraid of destruction. He says, I'm dealing with this spirit of fear. God says, I don't want you to be afraid because I'm not giving you a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Somebody may say, well, how can I not be afraid? It, listen, it's impossible to not be afraid with all this stuff going on. No, you can can walk in peace. You can walk in joy. Listen, listen, it's time for you to be dripping in joy. It's time for you to be dripping in peace and to say, wait a minute, a thousand. And I'm, I'm, I'm getting ready to get there when he talks about don't dread the disease and, um, or the disaster that strikes at midday for a thousand fall at thy side, at your side, though 10,000 are dying around you. These evils will not touch you. In Jesus name, listen, we may, we need to make that declaration, even though a thousand might fall on my side, 10,000 at my right hand, but it won't come near me in Jesus name. In Jesus name, I declare it won't come near me. I don't care if you haven't been built up in this in times past. This is why I'm teaching on it so that faith can come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. We need to now start enforcing our healing, enforcing our protection. I don't care what's happening around me. I declare in the name of Jesus, it will not come near me in Jesus name. Glory to God. I got to preach this mood because I'm sensing certain things. It's like I'm, I'm coming against the traditional way that people have understood things. People just think that, well, I just got to endure it until change comes. No, there's a place in God that we have enough authority and power that it can never touch us or even harm us. That's what his word is saying. That's what his word is doing. Listen, even as Jesus walked through the crowds and the Bible said they couldn't even touch him. And he, even when he was on the cross, he says, don't you know I can call 12 legions of angels, but I'm submitting myself to the purpose that God called for me to do. I understand the sufferings that happen in this world. I understand the sicknesses that are here. But listen, we have authority over all the power of the enemy. And the Bible declares that nothing shall by any means hurt us or harm us. And so listen, we got to walk in faith with this thing. We got to trust God and we got to believe God that the same way we can lay hands on somebody else that's sick. We can lay hands on our own bodies and we can speak life to our own bodies and we can declare with long life I'm satisfied with and God is going to show me his salvation. I declare I live long and strong. I declare that I manage my body well. I declare that I'm a good steward over my body, over my mind in Jesus name. I rest well. I'm living stress free in Jesus name and I declare it now in Jesus Jesus name. Praise God. Come on now. Somebody give me some amens out there. Let us know. Listen, I'm telling you now, I'm telling you now, I know some of you may have been dealing with things chronically for years, for years, but I'm telling you now today is your receiving day in Jesus name. I'm not trying to give you false hope. I'm giving you faith in Jesus name. I'm giving you something to support your hope. I'm declaring now, no, listen, I don't care if stuff has hit you in times past. There's a scripture that talks about that. It will not come upon me a second time. Okay. 
What if it hit, what if it hits you? Okay, you still can walk by faith. You still now trust and believe God. You still walk in his word in Jesus name for you walk in the spirit of life in Christ Jesus, which has made you free from the law of sin and death. Let me um let me let me in um man by the name of uh John Lake he, um, John Lake, his doctor, he was, um, I, I believe was in Africa. This was during a bubonic plague or something at that time. And there was a certain hill, certain village where people were just dying off. I believe that something happened in the, in the water and the animals were infected, but they died and it was like the water got contaminated and um, the cisterns and the um, sewage system or, or the different systems got contaminated and people were getting sick and they were dying. And as the uh, team of doctors went in, they began to examine the bodies of the people. And the, the disease, the germ would last in the bodies at least two days after they would die. And so uh, John Lake began to do a test. He told the people, he says, I want you to do a test. He says, I want you to take the, the disease that's in their body and put it in the palm of my hand. And he's like, put it under the microscope. And he says, watch this. He says, for I function in the spirit of life in Christ Jesus, which has made me free from the law of sin and death. He got so, he was so rooted and established in that reality that he was bold enough and willing enough because if you came into contact with that, you would catch it and, and be contaminated with that disease instantly. But he says, no, I'm not walking in fear. And even some of the other doctors were like, man, are you sure you want to do this? He was like, yeah, I want to prove something. I want to show something to you. The very minute they put it under the microscope and they took that foam, it was a disease out of the body of a dead corpse and put it in his hand. And they saw that the very moment it touched his skin, that disease died instantly. This man established himself in that truth. And you and I can establish ourselves. It's been in the book all along. But we got to establish ourselves in that truth that I don't care what's attacked everybody else, that even when it comes in my vicinity, this thing got to die because I'm dripping in this thing. I'm walking in the power of this anointing where it begins to ward off sickness and disease in the name of Jesus. Glory to God. Glory to God. Man, I sense something. The power of God has to manifest. Our faith has to grow, folks. We got to grow in this thing and stop receiving stuff and stop walking and stop waiting to the last minute to become established in it. A lot of times, sometimes people become so last minute and establishing. So by the time the sickness hits, you're so weak in faith. Now, it's, it's not every person in every situation, but we got to now start being, that's why I said we got to be on the offensive, put the word of God in you when you don't need it. So it's there for you when you do need it. This has got to be a systematic thing. The same way you take vitamins, the same way you take medication on a daily basis, sometimes two and three times a day. Listen, you can take the remedy of this word and you can begin to sow it in your heart where it has no side effects to it. That this word is only designed to bring healing let, let's let, let, let me let me man hold your place here in psalm let's go to um proverbs 4 i want to show you something real quick since i'm right here proverbs 4 we will come back to psalm 9 and 1 proverbs 4 20 proverbs 4 you can see i'm stirred up today i'm, I'm like man we got to deal with this we got to deal with this because god wants us to be well he wants us to be healed he wants us to be prototypes of man that's good he wants us to be prototypes of his glory. We are ambassadors. We are citizens of heaven. We are kings and priests. And I'm telling you now, I'm working person. I'm working on my own weight loss and I'm working on my own health. And I want to be whole and strong in every area of my life. I want to be intentional of being a man of God. I want to be intentional. It's not just about being a good pastor or just being a good leader. That's a part of it. But I want to be a good man. I want to be a man who's honorable before God. I want to be a man who's an example to his family. I want to be a man who's an example to the body of Christ. And I want to make Make sure you got to be that same example. 
you should have that same heart. God, I want to walk in the fullness of every promise that you have for me. Your promises are yes and amen. And sickness and disease is under the curse. I am not under the curse, but I'm under your grace and under your love. And that listen, Jesus transferred his health for my sickness and disease. So by his stripes, according to your word, I am healed. The Bible says this, verse 20 through 22. It says here in Proverbs 4, um, and I'm going to go to 23, 20 through 23. He says, my son, attend to my words. Attend. Give attention to my words. Incline your ear to my sayings. Let them not, my words, depart from thine eyes. So keep it before your eyes. Keep it before you. Keep giving attention to it. He says, keep them in the midst of thy heart. The Bible talks about the tongue being a pen of a ready writer, which documents on the heart. When you receive the word through the eye gate, the ear gate and the mouth gate, that it begins to sow into your heart, speak in life, declaring and decreeing what God's word says about you, that your heart gets full of the word of God. And out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth begins to speak. And so you got to keep your heart. He says, for they are life to those that find them, those words, and health to all their flesh. This word is health to our flesh. It is the remedy for every sickness and disease that we can encounter, that the word of God is our medicine that we can take. And now even from a spiritual standpoint, yes, we can do things in the natural. Yes, God has already provided resources. He's already provided nutrients in the earth for us to put in our bodies, for us to walk in divine health. And we're going to have to be students of that, of how to now take proper nutrition and exercise and, and resting and all of those things and enjoying life. The Bible says that laughter does good like a medicine. That listen, you need to start rejoicing. You need to start laughing. It'll distress you. It'll start releasing endorphins in your body. It'll start causing healing in your body. I'm telling you, with the joy of the Lord is your strength, your strength, that God wants you strong, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. There is strength that's available. And I'm telling you in Jesus name, I'm strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. And you need to declare that you are strong in the Lord and in the power of his might as well. Did you say that? Say that right now. Come on. It's time to take some medicine. Say I'm strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. His might, that might is supernatural strength. There's a thing called the spirit of might in uh, Isaiah 11, one and two. That's one of the facets of the anointing of the Holy Spirit, that the spirit of might will come upon you. That's what was upon Samson, where there was supernatural strength that was released. And I want you and I to begin to release our faith for the spirit of might, our faith for divine strength, supernatural energy, supernatural strength in Jesus name. I, yeah, I call on the spirit of might. I call on it in Jesus name. I draw on the power of God. I draw on the might of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now watch this. I like this. It's fine. It's health to all their flesh. He says, keep your heart with all diligence for out of it, for out of it, your heart, it, it flows are the issues of life, the forces of life. That word issues is translated forces, the forces of life. The power of God abides in you. Now, I want you to go back to Psalm 9 and 1. And we start, we ended in verse 7. He says, a thousand shall fall at thy side and 10,000 at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. He says, only with thine eyes shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked, because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high thy habitation, your dwelling place. In him we live, in him we move, in him we have our being. A lot of times we want the benefits of this, but we don't want to do the things that will cause those benefits to manifest. So we got to dwell in this. You got to hear it. You got to receive it. You got to believe it. You got to flood yourself with the fact that I am the heel. Even before I came out here, begin to minister today, 
in just my prep time and just quiet time, I began to play this song. This song came up. I am the Lord that healeth thee. And so I played the song and I put it on repeat over and over again that I begin to just hear that and I begin to receive it and I begin to pray in the Holy Ghost and pray in the spirit and just meditate on the fact that I am the God. He's the God that healeth me that I declare and I start declaring. As I started praying in the spirit, I started declaring, I declare right now that you are the God who has already healed me according to your word. And so, Father, I thank you right now that I am healed from every sickness and disease. I declare that strength is mine, that every disease, germ, virus, bad bacteria, infirmity, bad, vi virus or a parasite that touches my body dies instantly. I declare in Jesus name that I have long life, that I live long and that I live strong. My family needs me here. My church family needs me here. The body of Christ needs me here. You've assigned me a thing, Father, in this earth, and I will fulfill my days, Father, with pleasure. I will fulfill my days with peace. I will fulfill my days with joy. You have to declare and to decree that. You have to flood yourself with it in Jesus' name. You'll get so focused on the fact that God has already healed you before you, some of you gonna turn around. You gonna walk in this thing. I'm believing this for, for many of you, for all of you, that you get to the place where you meditate on it to the point where you are so focused on the fact that I'm already healed, that you will turn around and that thing is gone because it's, it's designed. The word is gonna now design, it's des the body is already designed to heal itself. And watch this, when you begin to enforce faith, even with your practical expressions of being mindful of what you put in your body, how you rest, how you exercise, listen, it is, it is God's promise for you to live long. You have an assignment to fulfill. And in Jesus' name, I declare you're going to fulfill that assignment and you're going to do it well. And God is saying this too, there are areas in our lives we're going to have to judge. We're going to have to judge things that are trying to disrupt that healing from manifesting. And so we don't want to work against the healing power. We don't want to work against what God has already set in motion where our healing and our health is concerned. So whether there are adjustments that you're going to have to make, adjustments in your schedule, adjustments, sometimes get off the computer and go rest. Sometimes go outside, take a walk, just detox, relax, detox your brain, your thinking. You know, get this stuff off. You be, you're so busy thinking because you want to accomplish something. Sometimes just stop, just stop. Let your mind rest for a second and stop stressing out over stuff. Listen, you got to learn how to be content, not complacent, but learn how to be thankful. Have an attitude of gratitude. I'm not get. I haven't gotten into this. I might get into it next week. Where the power of praise and thanksgiving is so important. Where you got to have an attitude of gratitude. Okay, God, I'm believing you and I'm trusting you for my next. But in the meantime, I'm going to rejoice where I currently am. And I know that, Father, and I just want to thank you. And sometimes you can have a murmuring and a complaining spirit. And God says you need to check that. You got to judge that. You always complaining about what didn't work out, what you don't have. And God is saying, you are not thanking me for what I've already done. So why should I give you more when you complaining about what you already got? You got to learn how to rejoice where you are. And Father, forgive me for murmuring. Forgive me for complaining. I repent from negative words. I repent from murmuring and complaining. I repent, Father, for being argumentative. I repent for being sarcastic. I repent for doing all this stuff. And in Jesus name, I'm going to have a divine turnaround, a supernatural turnaround, a supernatural acceleration. I'm going to forgive. I'm not going to harbor stuff against people any longer. I make a decision to walk in love. I make a decision to be at peace with all men wherein it's possible. And in Jesus name, nothing is going to affect my joy. Nothing is going to affect my body. Nothing is going to affect my advancement in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Now let's continue in Psalm 91. He says here, I like how Pastor Dollar said, he's like, we got to get Psalm 91 equipped. It's time we got to declare and decree things ahead of time. We got to set in motion the word of God. He says only verse eight, verse eight, let's go to Psalm 91, verse eight. Only with thine eyes shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked because thou hast made the Lord, um, which is my refuge, even the most high thy habitation. There shall no evil befall thee neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. 
There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague, no evil befall you, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. They, I like this. I like this. Now, let, let me go back to the New Living Translation with that. Let me go back to New Living. He says, I think I saw it in verse 9. He says, if you make the Lord your refuge, if you make the Most High your shelter, no evil will conquer you. No plague will come near your home. For he will order his angels to protect you wherever you go. They will hold you up with their hands so you won't even hurt your foot on a stone. You will trample upon lions and cobras. You will crush fierce lions and serpents under your feet. The Lord says, I will rescue those who love me. I will protect those who trust in my name. When they call on me, I will answer. I will be with them in trouble. I will rescue and honor them. I will, re will reward them with a long life and give them my salvation. He says, I like this. Listen, I'm going to protect you wherever you go. No evil plague will come now your dwelling. Nothing evil should happen unto you. I begin to think about not being afraid and not and coming against the spirit of fear. I'm not going to be afraid that Satan going to take my children. I'm not going to be afraid that, you know, wherever they go now, something evil is going to happen to them. It's going to happen to me or my wife or my family. I declare, no, my household is protected. Listen, I intentionally every day pray a prayer. Even when we go out driving, even when we go out riding, I'm not, listen, I'm, let me be, let me be just straight up. I'm not going to be fearful of driving while black. I'm not going to be fearful fearful of police brutality. I'm not going to be fearful. You know what I pray every day? And my family can attest to it. I've been doing this for years. I said, Father, I thank you. In my pathway is life. There is no death, no accidents, no traffic tickets, no vehicle malfunctions, no police stoppages, no hitting of anything, nothing hitting me. And I declare it in Jesus name. I declare it. No, I ain't got to be afraid. I ain't got to be afraid. I've been there where the thoughts come. Oh, Lord, here come the cops. Remember, because see all of this stuff that's now even through media that's being bombarded, that's now flooding your thinking. And now fear comes and you're afraid of your child. I'm afraid of raising a black man in this world. No, I ain't because God has promised me in his word what he'll do for me when I honor him and I love on him and I walk by faith and not by sight. I'm not going to be afraid when my son goes out. Yeah, we train him in certain things and we tell him how to conduct himself and all of these things, but I ain't walking in fear. I'm not going to be like, you know what, where are I? What's happening? I'm going to rest well and I'm going to sleep well in Jesus name. I refuse to be afraid. I refuse to allow the enemy to rob me of my peace and my joy. And you're going to have to do the same thing. Trust God. Believe God. Lord, listen, you believe in God for even for your children to have the right people around them. I declare, Father, in Jesus name, you got the right people in the right places at the right times to even help in, in, the, in the helping and the raising of our children. I don't care whoever they need to talk to. However, you got to get it to them. If you got to manifest yourself in this physical world to get answers to them, to watch over them, to protect them. I call on the angels of God and I tell them if need be manifest yourself in this physical world to enforce our covenant of protection and peace in Jesus name. And I declare it over you and your family. Rise up in your authority. And I'm not going to be afraid. I am not going to be afraid. And I'm not going to be afraid. Well, what if it didn't work? I'm going to keep speaking it because I walk by faith and not by sight. You got to keep. Listen, you got to exercise your faith and exercising your faith. See, faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word. Faith doesn't go by what it looks like. Faith goes by what the word of God says. And so even if what I see doesn't match up with what I'm saying as of yet, I'm believing that what I'm saying is going to change what I'm seeing. In Jesus name, I declare it. I declare longevity. I don't care how long. I don't care how long it's been. Chronic illnesses are being removed now in Jesus name. The force of faith is driving out sickness and disease. The force of faith is changing you right now. In Jesus name, I want you to declare and say, I am the heal, protecting my body from sickness and disease. Say, I am healed. I am whole from the crown of my head to the soles of my feet. Yeah. 
Say this, say my eyes are not dim. Neither are my natural forces abated. Blessed are my eyes for they see and my ears for they hear. I declare it in Jesus name. I listen, I, I declare it. I declare it. I declare it in Jesus name. I'm talking about to the point you get so full of health and divine healing that uh, I'm, I'm a little brisky, God, that your body is dripping with glory and anointing and power and who you come in contact with going to start getting healed because the force of life going to start flowing out of you while you talking. And they're going to say, I've been feeling better ever since I've been talking to you. I was feeling horrible before I came into your presence, but now I feel so good. Jesus said the words that I speak, John 6, 63, that they are spirit and they are life. And I speak the same spirit. I speak the same life in Jesus name that whoever I come in contact with the life of God is in you the nature of God is in you the peace of God is in you in Jesus name yeah we doing this thing you are a soldier in the army of the Lord you are an ambassador for Christ you are an authorized dealer of the power and the glory of God and so all of us gonna walk in this we lay hands on the sick and they recover we lay hands on sick folk and they recover. These signs follow them that believe. We cast out devils. We speak with new tongues. Listen, we lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. We speak life, we speak health, and I declare that you walk in wisdom and strategy, because some people, you need to start dealing with certain things. Sometimes you got to take time with some people. Now, when the gifts of the Spirit are in operation, that's by, as the Holy Spirit wills. But when you're talking about ministering, healing to those that are sick, you want to sow faith into them. You want to begin to now sow into them that God is a God who has already provided healing. He is already healed in the name of Jesus. And sickness and disease will have no power or dominion over them or over you. That you have the ability, ability to lay hands on the sick and they recover. Listen, Peter said it like this to the man sitting at the gate of the temple um, called Beautiful. He said, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I unto thee. In the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. In the, well, listen, he took authority over that thing. He didn't ask God to heal that man. He said, in the name, such as I have, such as I possess, it's already in me and on me. It, I've already been delegated this authority. So in the name of Jesus, get up and walk. We have that authority. See, you got to understand this. Instead of asking God, Lord, heal this person in Jesus name. Wait a minute. Listen, he says, listen, all power and authority in heaven and earth has been given unto me. Now go. Go, I delegate. This is why you got to understand delegated authority, delegated power. That's what authority is, delegated power. I've delegated you the right. I've delegated you the ability to be my authorized dealers of my power and glory in this earth. So instead of you shrinking back from people who are dealing with things, now it's time for you to rise up strong and realize you have authority that on my behalf that I've authorized you to go now don't pray that God will send just his angels or just send his healing power. He says, you can go to that place. You go lay hands. You go. Now, people, yeah, they have to allow you. But watch this, because even in that account, the man looked on them expecting to receive something. Now, he was expecting to receive money, but at least he was open and you can't override people's will. So now, even when you pray, this is why, too. Put them in a position, sow faith in them. Let them know that this is available. And when you now sense, wait a minute, okay, they're open now. Now say in the name of Jesus, because watch this, a person, you can short circuit, people can short circuit the power of God through unbelief, doubt and unbelief. Well, listen, even Jesus couldn't do miracles in certain places because it wasn't being mixed with faith because of the people's unbelief. That if Jesus couldn't do it, it's like because of their unbelief. It wasn't because of his. It was because of theirs. And so now when you encounter those, watch this. Don't become discouraged because they didn't get healed when you prayed for them. The power is still true. The power is still available. The word is still true. You just move on to the next. 
So don't don't get discouraged. Well, it didn't work that last time. Well, I did what pastor said and I still got sick. Wait a minute. You don't know everything that went on with it. You just heard it. Just start developing in it. And just because the attack came, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. Listen, it didn't say that it wouldn't always be formed, but he said it ain't going to prosper. So even in the midst of it, if you just getting laid into this thing and just starting to get a hold of it. Listen, I don't care if stuff has already hit your body. Now what you do is flood yourself with light. Flood yourself with this word. Listen, go back and repeat this message over and over again. Let it get in your spirit. Let it renew your mind. Get the scriptures pertaining to healing. Begin to sow it. Begin to speak it. Begin to declare it. Begin to decree it so that you can grow and grow and grow and become a powerhouse in this area that God says this. You ain't got no help. Okay, let me help. You ain't got to have no special anointing in this thing. You are already anointed by the power of the Holy Spirit. You have already been delegated as a king and a priest. You are already a minister of reconciliation through faith in Christ. And because you have faith in Christ Jesus, the anointed one in his anointing, because you are part of that body, you have that same anointing that the anointed one has. And now we walk in that power and that victory. And this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. And even as he is, so are we in this earth. So we are now God's representatives. And Father, this is why we say it in the name of Jesus. We walk in his authority. It's your power working through me. Listen, even Jesus said the works that I do are not me. It's my father working through me. It's him working through us. And I'm telling you now, it's time to walk in this healing. I don't care. Come on, let's pray. I'm going to lay hands on you. Now, sometimes you got to minister to people. You got to deal with them where they are. You got to speak life into them. I declare, I've been there. I've seen it. Well, we met, I, I keep, I've shared this before. I, I never forget that night. We met, my wife and I was ministering to this couple. The man was drunk while we were ministering to him in, in their uh, dining room, at their dining room table. And all of a sudden, this dude's, I mean, eyes bloodshot red from being drunk, and I mean to tell you, I knew, I knew I could just sense the anointing in the presence of God. If I just stay here with the word, that something gonna happen. This dude sobered up right before our very eyes and got born again right there at his table. And I'm telling you, the power is present. The power, you gotta have confidence in who you are and whose you are. You gotta be confident that when I enter into a room, God enters into the room. When I come on the scene, God shows up on the scene. Christ in me the hope of glory. Yeah, I'm the hands and the feet of Jesus. Wherever I go, the glory is there. The glory of God is on me and within me. I want you to declare that. The glory of God, I sense that anointing. The glory of God is on me and it wards off sickness and disease. My blood pressure is normal. 120 over 80 right now. In Jesus' name. Glaucoma is leaving my eyes now. Nerve damage is being restored and repaired now. In Jesus' name. I don't care. I bless I come against multiple sclerosis. I come against neurological conditions now, and I call them healed in Jesus' name. You think I command brain fog to leave you. I declare that your memory is sharp. I declare that your memory is blessed. The memory of the just is blessed in Jesus' name. I declare that we have the mind of Christ and the wisdom of God is formed within us. Wisdom. Wisdom, 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 wisdom to know what to do, wisdom to know what to cut out, wisdom to know how to manage your life, wisdom to know what to put in your body, wisdom to know when to go to bed, wisdom to know when to work out, wisdom, God will grant you wisdom, he'll tell you, okay, start walking, and before, don't, you ain't got to go to running, just start walking, go out, it distresses you, at the same time while he's healing you physically and trying to get your body in shape, what it's doing is, it's distressing you, giving you clearer thought for you to begin to think. And as you begin to think, he begins to download ideas into you and showing you how to come out of that situation. Because not only is he going to heal you of that physical ailment, he's going to heal you of that financial ailment. He's going to heal you of whatever it is you've been dealing with. The power of God is coming to clean house now in the body of Christ. He says, every promise that I told you, I have prophesied these things and they are coming to pass now now that my people, there is a 
flood of grace and anointing and power that is going to manifest and that is manifesting even now. That's going to radically transform and change things in Jesus name. But you cannot violate his principles. He says, I want you to flow in this thing. Just flow with me. Just flow with me. When I tell you to do something, do it. Just flow with me. When I tell you to detox, detox. Just flow with me. He says, before it turns into cancer, I'm going to unclog your arteries. I'm going to unclog your colon. And I'm going to get... I'm going to get waste out of your system that's been building up for years. And Jesus is going to come all out. And Jesus, now I'm not trying to sound vulgar, but I'm telling you now, in the name of Jesus, what has been a, trying to clog up your system, I command it to be released even now in Jesus' name. I command breakdown of old waste in your system that it comes out now in Jesus' name. Glory to God. Glory to God. This is specific stuff. Glory to God. Word of wisdom, word of knowledge, discerning of spirits. I prayed this beforehand. Come on, God. In Jesus name, in Jesus name, in Jesus name. Some of you got to do it. Some of you need to detox on periodically. Just detox your body. Get it out of you. Get it out of you. You're going to rest better. You're going to rest better. You're going to think better. You're going to wake up with more energy. You're going to think clearer throughout the day in Jesus inflammation, inflammation has to go now. It's going to chronic inflammation in your system. Chronic inflammation has to leave now in Jesus name. We are attacking this thing intentionally, intentionally attacking sickness and disease. Now chronic illnesses and you stop now in Jesus name. Glory to God. Mm -hmm. Chronic, chronic, that inflammation, that inflammation, yeah. Lymph nodes. I keep hearing, I'm hearing that. Yeah. Whatever needs to be healed. Shabril Bukuni. Sciatic nerves healed. Whatever it is. Yes. Yeah. Skin conditions healed in Jesus name. Yeah. Nasal passages opening. Hearts healthy, strong and healed. I'm telling you, you better let people know who dealing with sickness and disease. They need to go back and listen to this. The, the power is showing up. The power is present to heal. God is presently healing because he says this in, in Isaiah 55 and three, by his stripes, by the stripes of Jesus, you are already healed. You are already healed. You are already healed. I like this. Um, Isaiah 53, four and five says, surely, surely, surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. He's born. Out, he's listen. You don't have to deal with grief like the world deals with it. He bear, boy, he's borne your grief and carried your sorrow. Grief will be designed to wipe you out and, and, and uh, immobilize you where you can't function because you're dealing with such grief and sorrow and pain that you don't even know how to live. I declare in Jesus' name that that grief is coming off you now. That sorrow is coming off you now in Jesus name. The grief, the sorrow, grief is associated with loss. This is not just the loss of a loved one. This is the loss of opportunities, the loss of things that you should, you felt like you should have done in times past that you didn't maximize or steward well opportunities that God gave you that I'm telling you now, he says, wallow not. Don't sorrow any longer over those old things. This is a new season. This is a fresh wind. This is a fresh opportunity. Don't you know I can prosper you from any point in your life that you're in right now? Any place that you're in now, I can move you forward from where you currently are. So you got to trust me. Healing of emotions, healing of bad marriages, healing of bad relationships, whatever it is. The restorative, the restorative power of God and restoration and recovery of God. I'm telling you, it's coming now. It's, it's, it's already. He's going to start dealing with some things and some of you going to have to let it go. Whether that person ever apologizes for what they did, for whatever it, it ever. I'm telling you now. I'm telling you now. Some, they're going to have to. They're going to have to. They're going to have to submit. Some of them, there's some people in your lives, some family members, some people in, in, in relationships that God is already working on their hearts, but they are so busy fighting what God is doing in them that don't forget, God will not override a man or a woman's will. He'll give them the opportunity to repent and to change. But it's still up to them. He's already working on the hearts of people. Your prayers have already been answered. 
This is for somebody right now. Your prayers have been answered. He's already working on the heart of your mother, the heart of your father, the heart of your siblings, the heart of people, whoever it is. He's already working on their heart now. He's already working on them. You're going to have to rest in this walk in love and walk in peace and love them unconditionally anyway. Amen. So I declare in Jesus name, the healing power of God to restore your soul, to restore your body, your spirit. If you're born again, your spirit is already alive under God. Your spirit is already sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. Your spirit is already healed because uh, you're born again. What you've been dealing with is soul sickness a lot. The sickness of the soul, memories that have damaged you, that Satan keeps bringing up to stagnate you. And that's been the biggest fight now. We cast down those images in the name of Jesus and we take authority over them now. We declare all is well. All is well. Yeah. All is well in Jesus name. Amen. Now, Father, we thank you. We give you praise. We give you glory. We give you honor. We thank you for your redemptive power, your redemptive work that's already changing and rearranging things. We thank you for those, Father, even under the sound of my voice that have never made Jesus the Lord of their lives. Let them know that there is a no so salvation, that there is a literal heaven to gain and a hell to shun. Listen, hell is a real place. Heaven is a real place. The devil is real. God is real. You have a choice. God the Father says, I place before you <clears throat> life and death, blessings and cursing. Choose life. Choose this life in Christ. Jesus already died and took on the sins of the world. Jesus wasn't sent in the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Jesus already made provision for your salvation. He already took on the sins of the world. All you got to do is trust and believe it. The Bible says, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God is raised from the dead, you shall be saved. But with the heart, man believes unto righteousness. That means when you believe that Jesus is the Christ, the son of God, that he died for you, that he was raised from the dead for you, you're now being transformed into the righteousness of God, which means you're in right standing with God. It's not based off of your good works that make you in right standing with God. It's your faith in what Jesus has done that makes you right with God. That's a great thing. That means you ain't got to work to be right with God. Just believe to be right with God. Wow. I want you to do this. For those that have never given your life to the Lord, I want you to go ahead, get, commit your life to the Lord today. So that now what Jesus has done can be appropriated to your life. You become born again. Brand new spirit. Brand new spirit. Jesus already done it. You just got to believe it now. So let's do this. I want you to pray this prayer of faith. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe that you're the Christ, the son of the living God. <clears throat> I believe that you died for me. I believe that you were raised from the dead for me. Come inside my heart now, Lord Jesus. I make you the Lord of my life. Say, Satan, I no longer belong to you. Jesus is my Lord. And I'll serve only him all the days of my life. Say, thank you, Heavenly Father, for giving me your son. I'm saved now. In Jesus name. Now say this, say, Holy Spirit, come inside me now. I receive you now. You're now on the inside of me. I now have the ability to speak with other tongues as you give me the utterance. In the name of Jesus, glory to God. Amen. And amen. Glory to God. Now, friends, if that's you and you made Jesus the Lord of your life, we want you to connect with us. We want you we want to know who you are so we can help you grow in the things of God. That's part of our purpose is to teach you who you are and to understand how to now take God's word, how to be discipled in God's word, how to live life in abundance to the full until it overflows. And we make a decision to help. We make a decision to love. We make a decision to be made available to help you to do that. If that's you and you desire to connect with us, we want you to now, listen, we tell you, whether you're here locally, whether you're global, 
um, get to a place where you connect to a ministry that can help teach you and train you in the word of God. We recommend this ministry to you. That's part of our desire and part of our goal is to help teach people the authority, rights and privileges as believers on the Lord Jesus Christ to teach you how, who you are, to teach you how to take God's word, apply it to your situation and see the results. This is what we believe. We believe to see God's goodness while you're alive here, not in the here and now, not just in the sweet by and by, but here on this planet, here on this earth. Jesus came to give us life and we want to live that life in abundance to the full till it overflows. At this time, there's some information coming up that's come up on your screen as to how to connect with us. You can send us an email at connect at spiritifier.us, connect at spiritifier.us. You can also send us a message on our social media platforms and somebody from our connect team will get in touch with you to help you to achieve and accomplish and get connected to how to get involved with our discipleship process and how we can best serve you, okay? If there's somebody that's out there today that you don't have a church home and God is leading you to connect with this ministry, whether you're local or whether you're global, no matter where you are, listen, you can be a part of our e-church family where you're fed the word of God, we pray over you, we love you, we provide resources for your spiritual enrichment and edification. We wanna be there for you. We wanna help you grow and develop in the things of God. So if that's you, and you desire to join and connect with this ministry, just go ahead and simply send us a message, let us know, and tell us, hey, I want to connect with the church, I want to find, or if you just want to find out more information, you can visit our website at spiritifier.us. You can call us, and somebody from our team will be more than happy to assist you and to help you. And so we just thank God for you connecting and tuning in today. Well, y'all, at this time, we want to honor God in our giving. Um, there's some information coming up on your screen. The Bible decrees and declares that as we give, it's given to us again, good measure, pressed down, shaking together and running over, that God is causing men to sow and to give unto our bosom. In other words, he says, the pouch that is formed. So even as God begins to heal, he'll bring blessing and increase to you, even through the different streams in which you have set up in your life, so that God wants to funnel his increase into your life. And he wants us to honor him with all of our substance. It all belongs to him. It all belongs to him, not just the tenth, not just, listen, everything belongs to him. He's blessed us with all blessings, all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. He blessed us with the strength. So as we go before God, let's ask him, Lord, what would you have for me to give today? How can I honor you? How can I serve you today through my giving? One of the things about money, it makes a lousy master, but it makes an excellent servant. That God wants us to have control over resources in our lives to be a blessing. We are blessed to be a blessing until all families of the earth have been blessed. But God wants you to enjoy life and abundance to the full till it overflows. He declares that wealth and riches shall be in your house. He's given us the power to get wealth, to establish his covenant in the earth. God wants us to enjoy life. He said, I created all things richly for you to enjoy. He wants us to enjoy. There's nothing wrong with enjoying life. There's nothing wrong with wearing what you want to wear, living where you want to live, driving what you want to drive. He just doesn't want that stuff to have you. He doesn't want us to be covetous over that stuff. But listen, he, he loves for us to enjoy the things that he's created, the inventions he's created in the earth for our enjoyment. There's nothing wrong with that. He wants us to walk in abundance and prosperity and increase. And so even as you honor him, watch this, believe and trust. It's okay to expect harvest. It's okay to expect as you give for it to come back to you again, greater than what you gave. That's what God promised. Expect it in Jesus name. Praise God. At this time, the information is on your screen. As to how you can sow and give, there's a QR code that you can scan. It'll take you to a secure page where you can give. Don't worry, we don't sell third-party information to anybody, none of that stuff. That your giving is secure. It is secure. And so we just thank God for you sowing into this ministry and supporting us in the work that God has called us to do. I pray right now, increase favor over everything you do. May the doors of favor open up for you right now in Jesus' name, a floodgate of favor like you have never experienced that's coming out of the woodwork. Every time you turn around, favor showing up. Increase is showing up in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Well, y'all, I'm out of time, certainly not out of message. We just declaring and decree. I pray that you had a great Thanksgiving holiday. We declare and decree right now, wealth and riches in your house, blessing and peace. May, yeah, I, yeah, may great grace, great protection, protection over your people, protection over your people. 
We come against volatile situations, domestic violence situations even now. We pray peace, peace and protection, longevity and long life. Get them out of that situation now, Lord. Bring, send people across their path. Let it be revealed, even those that are in those situations, so they can come out now. We come against death in Jesus' name. We come against the spirit of murder. We take authority over it now in Jesus' name, and we declare and decree that all is well. We bless you and we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, y'all, God bless you. We love you. Where well, we here at Spirit of Fire. I'm saying. Oh, want to give a message. We are in person next week. Um, the service starts at 1.30 p.m. at the Arts Community Center. Uh, corporate prayer starts at 1.15. So for those that are coming in to assist and help, we're asking all of any volunteers to come to, to assist in setup and also in the breakdown. So we will be there at 12.30 p.m. for setup. So we're asking everybody to be there at 12.30 p.m. sharp um, to assist with that. We thank you and we appreciate you so much for doing so. All right, y'all. We are changing the culture, igniting the passion and living the dream. We thank God for you. We declare and decree that all is well. Oh, I almost forgot. Where is it? We had the truck, the picture of the truck. Put a, we, I, I've been forgetting to do this. Lord, forgive me. Now, I want y'all to do this with me. Say this. Point towards that picture. Say, in the name of Jesus, we believe we receive our new truck paid in full. In Jesus' name. Is it up? Is that? Okay. Well, we declare, we decree it so in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. All right, y'all. Love you guys. I'll see you next week. God bless you. Peace.